Last time we saw that the cube and the tetrahedron have the same total angle deficiency. This is not merely a coincidence, but it is precisely because the cube and the tetrahedron are both homeomorphic to the sphere. This is an example of the Gauss-Binet theorem in action. If we have a polyhedral surface S, so a surface divided into polygons, that has vertices V1 up to Vn, and the angle deficiency at each vertex is delta of Vi, then when we sum up the angle deficiency at every vertex, we get 2 pi times the Euler characteristic of the surface S. Okay, let's see the Gauss-Binet theorem in action one more time before we prove it. We're going to calculate the total angle deficiency of this polyhedral torus from earlier. It has three different types of vertices with different angle deficiencies. At the outside corner vertices, there are three squares meeting at a vertex. Around each of these vertices, there is an angle of 90 times 3, which is 270 degrees, and 360 minus 270 equals 90. So these vertices have an angle deficiency of 90 degrees, just like we saw in the cube. The vertices on the edges of this surface have four squares meeting around them. So around each of these vertices, there is an angle of 90 times 4 equals 360 degrees. And 360 minus 360 is 0. So each of these vertices have an angle deficiency of 0. Notice that we could unfold at any of the edge vertices and this surface would lay flat showing that the angle deficiency is zero. At the inside corners, there are five squares meeting at a vertex. This means that there is too much angle, so the angle deficiency is negative. Around each of these vertices, there is an angle of 90 times 5, which is 450 degrees, and 360 minus 450 is negative 90 degrees. So each of these vertices has an angle deficiency of negative 90. So this surface has 32 vertices as we counted last time. There are 8 outside corners with an angle deficiency of 90, or pi over 2. 16 edge vertices with an angle deficiency of 0. And that leaves 8 inside corners with an angle deficiency of negative 90, or negative pi over 2. We then total the angle deficiency at every vertex. We have 8 times pi over 2, plus 16 times 0, plus 8 times negative pi over 2, which gives 0. And this is the same as 2 pi times the Euler characteristic of the torus which we know is zero. So the Gauss-Binet theorem works in this case. Now let's get back to proving this result. The first step is to take the current subdivision of your surface into polygons and triangulate the whole thing. So if this cube is my polyhedral surface, then I have faces which aren't triangles, but I can easily fix that by just drawing triangles everywhere. We can do this no matter what shape a specific face is. Remember way back in part one when we did this for all convex polygons? Now that we've triangulated our polygon, we have a new subdivision with possibly new vertices. We know that the Euler characteristic of the surface is independent of the subdivision. And if we added any new vertices, they will lie on a face of the original subdivision, so they will have an angle deficiency of zero. So we have a new subdivision with only triangles that really doesn't change anything about the problem. For the second step, we know that all of the faces are now triangles, and that the interior angle sum of a triangle is pi. So if we add up the interior angles of all of the faces of S, we should get pi times f, the number of faces. In the third step, we can use this information to write an expression for the sum of the angle deficiencies. 
let S have V vertices. For a single vertex VI, suppose that alpha I1, alpha I2 up to alpha IK are the angles at VI of the faces containing VI. This is shown in the example I have below. Then the angle deficiency at VI is 2 pi minus the sum of the alpha IJ. To find the total angle deficiency, we add up delta of VI for all vertices of the surface. This gives 2 pi times V minus the sum of all of the alpha ij. This sum is exactly the sum of the interior angles of the triangles in the subdivision of S. And we already found that this sum is pi times f. Hence, the total angle deficiency of S is 2 pi times v minus pi times f. Remember in part two how we counted the edges of the polyhedral torus by counting the faces instead? We're going to do that same thing here, except now we have triangular faces instead of squares. Each face has exactly three edges contained in it. Each edge is still contained in exactly two faces. So if we multiply the number of faces, f, by three, then we should count every edge exactly twice. This gives us the expression 3f equals 2e. Then doing some algebraic manipulation, we have 3 halves f is e, and 3 halves f is the same as f plus 1 half f. And so we see that 1 half f is the same as e minus f. Okay, we're going to hold on to that fact for right now and use it in just a minute. So back to the sum of our angle deficiencies, we can factor out a two pi and we have V minus one half F. We can substitute in the fact that we just figured out and then we have two pi times V minus E plus F, which just happens to be the definition of the Euler characteristic of S. Boom bada boom, that's the proof. So easy. <laughs> okay. So we went through this proof very briefly. If you want to see it in full detail, definitely go check out Richard Schwartz's book, Mostly Surfaces. That's where I got a lot of this information from. Not to mention that book has a lot of really fun things about surfaces. Okay. So what we've learned today is the Gauss-Bonnet theorem, but it's the combinatorial version. The word combinatorial is referencing the math subject of combinatorics. You can think of this as meaning discrete in some sense. This is the combinatorial version of the Gauss-Bonnet theorem because it is about polyhedral surfaces, those with flat sides and corners. The classic version of the Gauss-Bonnet theorem is about smooth surfaces. However, as we increase the number of faces in the polyhedral surface, you may notice that the surface gets rounder and smoother. In this way, we can approach the classic version of the Gauss-Bonnet theorem from the combinatorial version. In the limit, the angle deficiency becomes something called the curvature, which is a measure of how fast the surface curves away from the tangent plane. We notate curvature with the Greek letter kappa. So the classic Gauss-Bonnet theorem states that integrating the curvature over a surface S will give 2 pi times the Euler characteristic of the surface. Definitely look into this version of the Gauss-Bonnet theorem more if you have experience in calculus or you're interested in extending what we've talked about today. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning about this really neat connection between the geometric and the topological. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, and as always, keep exploring.